Hi, I'm Sabin Yaakov. This presentation is entitled, What is Imaginary Permeability? I'd like to thank Frenetic Company for sponsoring this video. And they are also very kind to offer a free trial of their tools. Now, the details of how to get the free trial are given in the description section of the video that you are now watching. So what is imaginary or complex permeability? If we look at some data sheet of ferromagnetic material, like 3F3 of ferrous cube, we see plots like this. We see mu sub s prime. This is the solid line here. It's pretty constant here. Then it goes down with frequency. And then we have this dotted line, which is the mu double prime. And they are supposed to be used in this way. That is the total permeability is this permeability plus minus j mu sub s double prime. Okay, so this is a imaginary permeability. And the question is, what is this? Where is it coming from? Now to save typing, I've copied this section here from electrical for you website. And here is a post understanding magnetic permeability. And it is based on the fact that the definition of the permeability is the ratio between B, that is the magnetic flux density, and H, magnetic field. This is the definition of permeability, or permeability times H is B. Now, in the case of losses, you would expect a phase shift between B and H, because B is sort of associated with the magnetic flux density, then according to Faraday's law, it's associated with the voltage. H is associated with the current. And if there are losses, meaning that it's not just reactive part, not just a reactive inductor, but there is some losses, that is, there is some resistance, then it's going to be a phase shift between B and H. And here it is represented by this factor here. So this is a vector form of this H and B, both of which are assumed to be phasors at a given frequency, omega. And here we have this additional phase shift between B and H due to the losses. Now, when you then take the ratio between these two, you end up with this expression, which can be described in a compact way like this. And this is exactly what we are talking about. So we have a real part of the permeability. This is this part here. And then we have an imaginary part of the permeability, this part here. Okay. So this is an expression or an outcome of the fact that there is a phase shift between B and H. So what does it mean? Looking at the equation for an inductor that is say built uh, around the toroid, say, then the inductance is equal to mu sub zero, that is the vacuum permeability, times the relative permeability, which we are talking about. And then n square A is the cross-section area of the toroid, say, and L is the magnetic path length. Now, if we consider this permeability or relative permeability as a complex term, then this is split into two parts. This is the reactive part. This is the original pure inductor. And this is the imaginary part. Now, for the impedance, we are multiplying the inductance by j omega in the phasor calculation or presentation. Once you multiply it by j omega, and then you have here a complex number, then this part actually becomes a real number. While here, we are left with the conventional j omega l, which is the impedance of a pure inductor. This means that in this way, or this model, leads to this equivalent circuit of an inductor plus losses. That is, the losses are expressed here as a series resistor. And this is the value of the resistor. It is a function of omega that is a frequency dependent. And then it's also dependent on imaginary permeability, which by itself is a function of frequency. And then the inductance, the larger the inductance, the larger will be R sub S. So in this presentation or in this 
modeling approach, the losses are due to a serious resistor with the pure induction. Now, this model is, of course, correct for AC current or voltages, because uh, at uh, zero, at DC, th there are no losses. Omega is equal to zero, so the resistance is zero. Okay, so this is an AC of model uh, compatible with phasor calculation. Now, if I have an AC current passing through this uh, inductor, then the losses expected are I squared times Rs. Now, the magnetic flux density is a function of the current, and therefore I can express the current as a function of the magnetic flux density, taking into account also the expression for R sub S, this is this resistor, I end up with this conclusion here, that taking out some terms which are not that relevant at this point, that the losses are proportional to frequency, magnetic flux density to the power of two, and then this imaginary permeability. Now looking at this curve here of the magnetic permeability and for this section here, it looks as if the relationship between the imaginary permeability and frequency is like a straight line here in the log-log scale, which means that you can express the imaginary permeability as the F, that is the frequency, to the power of some gamma. And therefore, I can actually absorb this part into the frequency, increasing the power factor here. So it will be like the losses will be a function of the frequency to the power of, well, something like larger than one, and then B squared. So this approach of modeling of losses of the imaginary permeability leads us to this relationship or this estimate of losses, which are a function of frequency and magnetic flux density. Now, this is not new. In fact, Steinmetz predicted in his writing and research that the losses of ferromagnetic material should be f to the power of 1, that is frequency, times b squared, magnetic flux density squared. Today, we know that this prediction does not fit very well ferrite and some other materials, ferromagnetic materials, and this is why today what is done is the following. The losses are being measured and then fitted to this template. When alpha and beta are fitted to the data set that is obtained experimentally. Now, for example, for 3F3, F to the power 1.13 and B to the power of 2.28 is the end result of this fitting. So what we see here is that the two approaches of modeling losses, the one according to the Steinmetz equation and the one according to the imaginary permeability, sort of come together to approximately the same expression in both cases, you do have to do fitting to actual data because the theoretical prediction are just insufficient for accurate estimation of the loss. And here is another point that needs perhaps clarification, and that is the following. We understand now the losses of the inductor for a given current will go up with frequency. We know that. Now, in the case of class two ceramic capacitor like X7R, the losses are going down with frequency because the ESR is going down. So therefore, for a given current, the losses are going down. So this is actually a behavior which is just the other way around. So the question is, why is this so? Well, again, Steinmetz touched on this problem too. He predicted that the losses of a dielectric material around which a capacitor is being built, should be of this form. Frequency times the displacement square, which can be translated for a given structure to voltage. So Steinmetz predicted that the losses of a dielectric material should be of this form, and that is proportional to the voltage. So therefore, 
for a given current, if you increase the frequency, indeed, this term goes up, but this is now to the power of two. So the voltage is actually going down. So therefore, in the case of a dielectric material, you would expect, according to Steinmetz, that indeed this losses will be going down, the total losses of the ceramic capacitor, say, will be going down with frequency. And this is indeed what we find out because uh, ESR is actually going down with frequency. So what is the summary of all this? Now, the imaginary permeability is a measure of inductor losses due to the hysteresis of BH relationship, and it comes about because of the phase shift between B and H. Now, like in this time which equation, the native expression of the complex permeability does not fit the losses of modern ferromagnetic material. So you do have to do fitting to some template of the form in order to get the coefficient. Now, consequently, there is a need for fitting for each material as is done today when using this time meet template. Now, currently, more information is available for calculating the ferrite losses by this time meet equation rather than the imaginary permeability. So, imaginary permeability is indeed important in terms of the theory of ferromagnetic materials, but today we are not using it that much because the fitting is not done to this template, but rather to the Steinwitz equation. In fact, the templates are not that much different. So, so once you are doing the fitting, you can't say that this is a fitting to the Steinwitz or maybe to this uh, imaginary model permeability. So this brings me to the end of this presentation. I thank you very much for your attention. I hope you found it of interest and perhaps it will be useful to you in the future. Thank you very much.